In this video, we will look at finite state machines. A finite state machine is an, an abstraction we use to describe any system that can be captured in the form of, so any system that can be captured by this semantic, which is it takes inputs, and there could be multiple inputs, and it generates outputs, and it performs certain logic, and this logic that it performs puts the system in different states. So it, it reacts to the inputs, changes states, and produces outputs. So any system that can be described like this is, is described by a finite state machine. So in order to fully describe a finite state machine, we need five things. The five things that we uh, use, uh, I call it a five tuple, if you will. The five things that we use are, first, the set of inputs. the input set. The second thing is set of outputs that are generated. The third thing is the set of states that the system goes through. And the fourth and important thing is to describe how we move from one state to another state in reacting to the inputs. So this is what we call as a state transition. Now say state transitions are, as I said, how do you transition from one state to another? We use two different ways of describing this. One is a graph, a state transition graph, or a state transition matrix. This is commonly used in the literature. We will, in this, in this module and in this class, we will primarily use a state transition graph, which we will call an STG, to describe. And the last piece of the tuple, last element, is the output determination. So what output determination is saying is how what determines the output? How do you generate the output? What conditions have to be satisfied for it to, for output to be generated? Now, the kind of machine we're going to look at is what is called a Moore FSM. A Moore FSM, the, the states, that is, when I generate a state, the next state is dependent on, is a function of, the current state and the inputs. Also, the output is a function, I'm going to call that function g, if you will, a function of just the current state. In other words, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between in a more machine, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between outputs and states. That is, each for each state, there is a unique output that is generated. What we will not be looking at in this class, and those of you who are curious can um, explore, explore this, um, is another kind of machine called a Mealy machine, a Mealy FSM. A Mealy FSM looks almost identical, except that so it still has the next state dependent on the current state and input, but the output in a Mealy FSM is a function of not just the current state, but also the input. So 
The reason why we don't look at the melee FSM is it's a little complicated, but suffice it to say that anything that can be done with a melee machine can can be done with a more machine so they're both equally powerful and therefore we choose a simpler one which is the more machine in this course so all this sounds good but how does it exactly work so let's take an, a problem to apply this to so the problem I'm gonna look at um, is gonna be one so let's state the problem so let's clear this Let's state the problem. The problem I'm going to apply this to, or a system that I want to describe, is, is a recognizer, so a detector or a recognizer. So recognize whether, or detect whether, the sequence of bits read so far has an odd number of ones. So in other words, here's my system and I'm gonna read a bit at a time through some some port. Let's uh, let's not worry about what port it is. I'm gonna read a bit, and if if let's say the bit sequence looks something like this, so this is my input, and it's a single bit that I read, and let's say the input sequence looks something like this: one, a zero, another zero, a one, a zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, and so on. So this is how the input sequence is. Now, what we want to see is, as soon as we read a bit, we want to know whether the number of 1 so far is odd. So the first bit I read, I will produce an output. So this is my output. And when I read the first bit, so far, there's only one, one red, and so it has to be, the output has to be a one. Now, I read a second zero, and this zero makes the number of, number of um, one so far still be an odd, because there's only one, so I continue to write a one. I read another zero, I continue to write a one. I read a one, that's gonna make my output be a zero, because right now there are two ones. So this, at till this point, there are two ones, so I write a zero. I re read another zero, I nothing has changed, nothing has changed, and I read this one, I produce a one because now there is there are three ones. And now I read another one, so I produce a zero and a zero and it continues. So in other words, it's keeping a running tally of how many ones it has read. So this is my system that I want to describe. So we we will first identify all the elements. So let's fill in all our elements. So our first element is our input for the FSM. We're saying that there's a single bit. Input is one bit, which can be a zero or a one. Output, again, is a single bit. And it's also a zero or a one. A zero or a one to indicate whether the number of ones so far are odd or even. So the indicator here is one indicates that they're odd, zero indicates that so far it's an even. So the third thing is states. Well, as the logic would, uh, would determine, if I want to keep track of how many ones have been generated, how, have been read so far, and I want to know whether they're odd or even, I would need two states. And I'm going to describe the two states by these circles. So one of, so there are two states, so I call them two states, and the two states are, I have odd so far, odd one so far, or even one so far. So I call them my even and odd state. 
So I start off my system in an even state because I haven't read anything yet. And so I'm saying zero ones are even. So I designate my initial state by drawing an arrow into it. And now I have to do the state transition. So this is a graph. So this is my fourth step, which is a state transition graph. The state transition graph has nodes, which are circles, and arrows. So the arrows then will tell me how I transition one from one state to another state. So if I'm in the even state and I read a one, which means that the number of one so far will become odd. So I'm going to draw a line like that. So this is saying that if I read a one, I go here. On the other hand, if I read a zero here, then I stay in the same state. So the arrows are going from one state to another state to indicate that on an input, so they're tagged by the input. And if the input is a zero, I stay in even. If the input is a one and I'm in current state is even, then I go to odd. Now, I've accounted for all possibilities in this state because there's only two possible inputs, a zero or a one. I'm here in odd, let's say, and if I read a zero, I still remain odd. If I read a one in this state, I transition to this even state because two ones make it an odd. So if I'm already here, then I do that. So that's my state transition graph. My fifth element, which is the output determination, remember I said that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence in a Moore FSM. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence between a state and output. So I will write the output within the state, and I say if I'm in even, then I have to produce an output of zero. If I'm in one, if I'm in odd, then I have to produce an output of one. So this shows us the elements of a finite state machine, where the state transition graph describes everything that we want to know about the system, and we have to make sure that all inputs are accounted for in all states, and we also have to say what outputs are generated. Now, if I were following this, uh, if I were to traverse this finite state machine for the given input, then it would look something like this. I would, the first one I read is going to get me from this state. So I remember this is my initial state. So I go from here to here, right? I make this transition because I read a one. And then I read a zero, so I stay within this state. I read, and so this, this transitioning here would have produced this one. So that's the first one that got generated. I. I come here, I read, a, I read now a zero, so I stay there, so I produce another one. And I read another zero, so I produce a third one. So that's all the ones that are being produced. And then I read a one, which is gonna put me back in this state, and when I'm in this state, I produce my, produce a zero, which is this one right there. And then I read another zero, so I remain here, and I produce a, a second zero, which is this guy. I read another zero, so I produce that one. And I read a one that will transition me to this state again. And I go back to this, this state, produce that one, which is coming from here again, and so on. So this is a traversal of the FSM for a given input.